when I say he froze, I mean myself. Friends, cause I can't redeem myself. Bye. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Elder Ayil from One Nation, One Power coming back to you one more time this evening. I uh, I just want to come on here today and just address a few passages of scriptures for you. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys out there. If you stick with the Bible, no matter what any Israelite or church preacher says, if you just follow the manuscript that God gave you, you'll be all right. But don't allow people to take the Bible and tell you what it means when you clearly can read it and you can understand what it's saying. Are you following me? You got to read this Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, not man, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. Let's rightly divide a few passages of scriptures. Because there's a lot of doctrines going on out there that just because we uh, woke up and came into the knowledge of who we are as Hebrew Israelites, that we are somehow a hate group and we're tied to hate. When it's the total opposite, the Bible clearly lets us know that in 1 John 5 and 3, we go there in a little bit, it explains and tells us what love is. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. So when we teach in the Most High's commandments, we are actually teaching people love. Why? Because we love them so much, we're giving them the commandments of God, which in turn is keeping them out of hell. Understand that? That's what love is. Love is not me simply patting you on your back and saying, hey, I love you. No, we are eternal beings, and we're going to live an eternal life. So if I love you, I care about your destination and not where you are today. Now let's also go into the Bible in Mark chapter 9 beginning at verse number 38 because there's another doctrine out there that's teaching people that hell don't exist and that where you live in now is hell I want you just to think about that for a minute hell is not real and where you living at right now is hell if where I'm living at right now is hell why can somebody answer me why is Walmart down the street <laughs> Is Walmart in hell? <laughs> or just maybe I want you know, why is Arby's in hell? You see, you just use common sense. When people make those type of statements, just ask them, why is the NBA in hell? <laughs> uh, can you tell me that? Why is the NFL, sports, ESPN, why are we enjoying ourselves in hell? If this is hell, why are we having so much fun? <laughs> Another one I want to just add to you. This is common sense. If somebody says to me, hey, brother, you know, this is hell. Hell has enlarged itself. Hell really not in the center of the earth and hell not real. Well, I'm going to ask them this question. If hell not real, where are these demons trying to take me if they can kill me? <laughs> Hello, where are these spirits trying to take me if they can get me? Are they trying to take me to McDonald's? <laughs> Maybe these demons are trying to get, you know, they, they're giving us hell, trying to get us to commit suicide to go where? Where do you go if you commit suicide if hell not real? Maybe Arby's? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, stop listening to these people. It sounds good, but do you have itching ears? Or have you followed, come out of Christianity that did nothing but itch your ears and now you find out you're an Israelite? Are you a Gentile coming in among the Israelites and now you still got itching ears? Maybe we need to pray for your ears because the Bible clearly tells you that hell is real. Let's go into Mark chapter 9 and let's begin at verse number 38. Mark 9 and 38. Read along with me. Don't believe nothing I say. You got to see it with your own two eyes. The Bible says, And John answered him, 
saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils. Can I ask you a question right now, brother? Why we don't see people casting out devils today, except for us? We still trying to figure out why it is it the disciples seeing other people casting out devils like them. I'm still looking for other Israelites to cast out devils. But when we talk like this, you know, this is uh, what they call it, spooky. Yeah, spookism. This is spookism. So let's read this again. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followeth not us. We've seen this brother casting out devils just like us, but he ain't following us. He's not a part of our camp. He don't wear what we wear. He don't act like we act. He don't go where we go. Let's see what Christ said about that. And we forbade him because he followeth not us. We told the disciples telling Christ, we told his other guys that's not following us that they need to stop casting out devils because they're not following us. <laughs> Sound familiar today? Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Verse 39. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. Get out of his way. Leave the people alone. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For he that is not against us is on our part. What Christ is saying in verse 40, let me break it down for you. He's saying, for all of those Israelites that are preaching the same doctrine that I gave them word for word and not adding to it or subtracting from it, they for us. But all them other Israelites that's coming up with these other doctrines, like uh, you can take the chip at the end, uh, like hell not real, and I'm sorry, they are against us. Why? They teaching things they are not. Subverting whole houses. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Verse 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Now verse 41, I can break that down for you also today in 2016. Because here in Christ's days and in Christ's times, there was not a group of people putting fluoride in the water. <laughs> so I would advise you today, if somebody coming to give you a cup of water, to inspect that water before you drink that water. So let's keep going. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Christ says, if there come along somebody trying to subvert my teachings, trying to add to it or take away from it, in the end, it's going to be better for him if he tied a rope around his neck with a giant rock and cast himself into the sea. Can you imagine that? How much water would he drink before he died? The first 43. And if thy right hand offend thee, Cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. This is the part I want to get with. In verse 43, Christ says that if you continue to sin, you will end up, let me break it down for you, just like he said Having two hands, it's better that you cut one off, that you deal with your situation, than to have two hands to go into hell. Into hell. He didn't say hell is on the earth. To go into something that's going to another place, from one place to another place. To go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. This is Mark chapter 9, verse 43, Christ this is the red letter right man. This is red. Christ said, the fire shall never be quenched. Now, let's go one more verse. We're going to go down, and we're going to prove that hell is real. And that this is not hell. Verse 44. Look at your Bible. Go along with me. 
Matthew 9, 44. Now, it has been said that this is hell where we are today. I'm sitting in hell now. Look at my, look at, look at one part of my house. Got a nice comfortable couch over there in hell. Got another chair over there in hell. Got my other brother from the tribe of Gad sitting here. We sitting here in hell. I don't hear no screaming and no hollering. The devil is a liar. It's not hell. Verse 44. First, he says in the end of 43, it's the place where the fire shall never be quenched, meaning it's never going out. And now verse 44. Where their worm dieth not. Where their worm dieth not. Where their worm dieth not. This is uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 44. Christ said, this place called hell has worms that never die. Now, uh, using common sense, I see robins every day in my yard. <laughs> Running back and forth, you know them robins, them birds. They're going out there picking, they're hunting the ground, they're looking for worms. What happened to that worm when that robin pick it up and he choke his head back and he started going like that? Did that worm just die? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we see worms die every day. We step on them. We run them over after a rain. They come up after the ground is nice and saturated. Brothers and sisters, stop listening to these lies coming out of the mouth of some of these brothers talking about hell does, does not exist and that you're living in hell. You get a paycheck in hell. You get income taxes back every year in hell. This is ludicrous. <laughs> Christ said, it's a place where the worm dieth not. Hell is real, brothers and sisters. And a lot of us, sad to say, are going in head first. Once again, this is El Dayil telling you that we as Hebrew Israelites do not teach hate. We teach love. For 1 John 5 and 3. Go there right fast. 1 John 5 and 3. So if you are new to this walk, you just come to this walk, and you're seeing some of the mother brothers out there acting like I've never seen people act in my life, those are not, they're not with Christ. They're not teaching the doctrine of Christ. They're teaching the doctrine of Satan pretending like they're following Christ. And you need to turn them clowns off, because it's going to be them clowns that's going to cause the roundup of all of us. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. This is what we're supposed to be teaching. The love of God. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. We teach love, brothers and sisters. Just because we find out who we are, we come into the knowledge of the truth, we still are commanded to teach the commandments of God. John 14, 15, Christ said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And this is love, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So there go your answer. We are not a hate group. We do not affiliate with hate groups. We teach the love of God, the respect of God, and the morality of God. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. No matter who like it or not, we're going to follow Christ. To the end, my friend, shallow arms.